What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out funniest redacted moments in bloopers, man. This should be a very interesting one. We're gonna check out some of Redacted's funniest moments and uh, blooper-related mo uh, moments. It's it's actually one of the weirdest things when Redacted has done some funny things or done some bloopers because someone is is like tough and strong as this guy is doing something so silly or making a blooper it, it doesn't really fit but it works at the same time so we're gonna check out some of those moments appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel let's see uh let's go back down memory lane on redacted's funny and blooper uh related moments and once again people were asking me to check this out so if i'm gonna check it out i'm gonna have some fun with it let's get right into this one man Brock Lesnar is now being erased from history, but let's yep. not forget the funniest moments from the Beast's career, like when Brock admitted he doesn't watch Monday Night Raw. Tell me you heard what Roman Reigns said about you. The guy never shows up. He never <laughs> has time to actually come to work, but oddly, he has plenty of time to show up to the UFC. Oh, he That's crazy. It's crazy that he's saying that now. Huh. It's funny how the, the tables have turned over the years. Roman saying that now about Redacted when he's doing the same thing that Redacted doing? Hmm. I know it's a different situation, but it's it's funny now. It's all in perspective now. Yes, I didn't, Paul. I don't watch the show, Paul. Why would I watch the show? You need to hear and see. That was my exact reaction when Cody Rhodes lost to Roman Reigns. Yeah. On the topic of Paul Heyman, there's a very good reason why Heyman did all the talking for Lesnar. Less than a year into his first run in WWE, Lesnar was betrayed by Heyman and the Beast is on his own for the first time. Mm -hmm. That meant that Brock also had to talk on his own and the results were... Because of you, Bill, I can't sleep at night. Not good. <laughs> However, things got worse when WWE tried to make Brock Lesnar a good guy. During his first WrestleMania match in 2003, Lesnar infamously bought Oh a shooting star gosh. press. Two and a half weeks later, Lesnar addressed his near-death injury, and it was something. Did you see that? I landed on my noggin. Nobody's ever kicked out of an F5. They hurt, Cole. You can see why WWE got Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman back together. Now, in fairness to Brock, he did get better on the mic later in his career. I know some of y'all not gonna agree with this, but he did get better. Redacted at the time, he definitely got better later in his career. He's, he was more comfortable on the microphone, so I, I will say that. But early in his career, no. No, 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 no. It was it was not good at all, man. Not good at it. it would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was not good. It was just like, once again, someone that's that size, that you know, strong and competitive, and then they had that voice, it, it didn't match. Same thing with him doing goofy stuff and being silly. It doesn't match, but it's it's funny in a weird way. So it is what it is. Perhaps his best and funniest line ever said was what he told Heath Slater. On Raw yeah, in 2016, Paul Heyman and Lesnar were in the ring doing what they do best, hyping up Brock's upcoming pay-per-view match. They didn't get to say much though, because Heath Slater apparently had a death wish and interrupted them. Heyman tried to brush off the one-man band, but Slater stood his ground. Heath was in need of a WWE contract and wanted to have a match with Lesnar to earn one. Heath Slater started explaining that he had kids to feed, and at first, it seemed like the Beast was gonna show some humanity, this but is this is Brock though. Lesnar we're talking about. I don't give a sh about your kids. <laughs> oh no, not Smart Heath! And an F5 to Heath Slater! Yes, I am going to hell for laughing at a man trying to provide for his family, but at least I'll go happy. Now this is an example of destroying someone's now, career with your fists. Now okay. here's the thing. If Redactor said that to me, I'm like, okay. Alright. That's fine. That's fine. And you wait. You wait. Because he has to go to the back at some point. Soon as he gets in the back back there, Paul Heyman and, you know, redacted, laughing it up. You saw what I said to him about his kids. I don't give a damn. Blah, 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 blah. Patrick, one chair shot to the back of the head and one chair shot to Paul Heyman just because. Yeah. Give him a case of the CTEs. He still probably won't remember disrespecting your kids, but he'll have the CTEs forever.
Fucked up, right? A few years later, Brock demonstrated how to end someone's career with just four words. On Monday Night Raw, oh, Mustafa was Ali so was doing an interview <laughs> discussing his upcoming match against the Intercontinental Champion. This was messed Gunther. up. This was Mustafa Ali's biggest match of his career, and he discussed how it had been his childhood dream to become the IC Champion. <laughs> this heartfelt moment was destroyed by four simple words. And become the Intercontinental. Get a life, kid. Bro, that was fucked up, bro. That was fucked up. He's pouring out his heart. He's pouring out his soul. Only for a nigga to cut through the interview. <laughs> Get a life, kid. You just let us know on TV that he's a JAG and we shouldn't expect anything from him. That's why I said that shit was cold. That shit was fucked up. It was funny, but it was fucked up. <laughs> Once again, this is where you get a steel chair. Once again, wrestler's favorite weapon. And while he's doing his entrance, Kapatrick, right to the back of the head, knock off that stupid cowboy hat, give him another case of the CTEs. Problem solved. Now, of course, you always have to deal with when will Redacted show up to another show and try to get his revenge? Yes, I understand that. You deal with that when <laughs> the time comes. But initial, yes, get your revenge. Don't let. Someone tell you, get a life, kid. Interrupt your promo. You crack him over the head with a steel chair and call it a day. Solves a lot of problems. Not surprisingly, Ali was released four months later. Yep. Now, this is all part of the script, but this next moment was not, and it's pretty funny. After Whoop. winning his second WWE Championship in season three, Brock Lesnar's first challenger was John Cena. I remember the two this. had had a backlash with Lesnar reign supreme. While Brock's hand would be raised, his belt would fall, literally. On the following episode of SmackDown, Lesnar's making his entrance when the WWE Championship fell from Whoop. his waist. WWE actually edited this out of the episode and replaced it with a different shot of Brock. While mm -hmm. WWE may want us to forget, something this funny will always be remembered. Another funny moment was when Brock Lesnar suddenly became Triple H for a split second. Enjoying all the finer, maybe not the finer things. I don't think he liked that vintage. He spits that all over the place. Jesus. The off the wall. Now, if not caring about Heath Slater's <laughs> kids isn't Brock Lesnar's funniest line, then this next one is. After winning the 2015 Royal Rumble, Roman Reigns was prepared to take on WWE Champion Brock Lesnar for the first time. The setting could not have been bigger, as they not only competed at WrestleMania, but they also- Do y'all remember that cringe-ass, like, cringe promo before? Like, the last- I think it was the Go Home show. And he was- I think- he was holding the championship like they had a face off and he was holding the championship. They both was holding the championship like it's mine. It's mine. <sighs> We've come so far. We have. Guys, we got to appreciate that. Appreciate where we are now from where we were before, you know? wrestled in the main event. As soon as the match started, Brock Ooh. easily dominated Reigns. The champ was hitting all of his signature moves, including German suplexes. This led to Lesnar saying his now iconic line, Yep. Suplex City, bitch! It's just funny that Brock took the time to diss his opponent like that. Plus the line led to some pretty good remixes. Suplex <laughs> like an RKO, Suplex City came from out of nowhere, but it definitely stayed around for years to come. Yeah, On the flip side, I'm guessing Brock Lesnar wishes this next moment would go away. <laughs> While talking might not always be his thing, Lesnar's arguably the most intense WWE wrestler in the ring, except when he goes from sounding like a beast to a kitten. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's hilarious for a pretty obvious reason. The beast Brock Lesnar is being someone senseless, and then he goes. It's not just when he's fighting either. Brock Lesnar's voice cracks even happen when he's on the mic. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. But I, it's, yes, you look menacing redacted, but. That's just one of the funniest clips. Let's do it. <laughs> what? Pick up a steel chair. You want to do what? Maybe I'll crack some bass into your voice. I ain't got no bass. Let me crack some bass into your voice. Cause what was that? I'm sorry. That's that's what makes Redacted when he's getting into his primal rage. 
is so funny because he doesn't have a voice of a beast. He has a voice of someone that, you know, <laughs> is the opposite of that. But it's it's funny. It, that's why it's hilarious. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> These moments are just hilarious, and what makes it even better is the fun fans have had with Brock's voice hiccups. <laughs> During Brock Lesnar's first feud with John Cena in Chosen 3, Cena said this. Hey Brock Lesnar, here comes the pain. God built me strong, forget to give me brain. John Cena kind of ended up being right. In 2019, Brock Lesnar shocked everyone by entering the Money in the Bank ladder oh, match and winning the briefcase. A few weeks after the surprise win, Seth Rollins confronted Lesnar and called the Beast a coward. Rollins tried to get Brock Lesnar to cash in his Money in the Bank contract at that moment, and Lesnar was ready to do it. Before the Beast could make a decision, Paul Heyman read the actual Money in the Bank contract, which states that it's good for one year. Apparently, this is news to Brock Lesnar. <laughs> I guess bro, that shit was. I ain't gonna lie to you. He smacked him with the damn paper. I got a year. I'm still don't know. That lets me know if he didn't know that, then he definitely don't watch the product. He just gets paid, beats up people, and then goes home to watch certain videos of women peeing on themselves. <laughs> All right, let me stop for this nigga come for me. Don't worry, redacted. I got a steel chair with your name on it. <laughs> so we shouldn't be too surprised Brock didn't know that. After all, he said he doesn't watch the show. There we go. Surprisingly, one thing that Brock Lesnar likes to do is dance. What's even more shocking is that he's actually pretty good at it. The night after winning Money in the Bank, Brock Lesnar put the briefcase on his shoulder and pretended it was a boombox. That was kind of funny. But the next week, Brock Lesnar took it a step further. Yeah. Brock oh Lesnar God. turned his Money in the Bank briefcase into a boombox and started oh dancing. Unfortunately, God. the Brock party came to an end at Extreme Rules when Lesnar cashed in his briefcase. While boombox Brock was great. I still, to this day, that just reeks of Vince booking because Brock has never been the one to ever need. Oh, I said his name. My bad. Let's reverse that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Redacted has never, ever needed a money in the bank briefcase. I don't know why they even put him in the match. What's the point? He's redacted. He don't he never that to me that was always a match to build up a new star. We know who redacted is. He never needed that in my opinion. That's just how I feel about it. Sorry about that guys. I slipped up. Nothing can compare to mariachi band Lesnar. In the lead up to his match at No Way Out against Eddie Guerrero, Brock Lesnar Eddie, decided to get under his opponent's skin in the most hilarious way possible. Lesnar brought out a mariachi band and walked to the ring wearing a sombrero. What makes it even better is Lesnar's cheesy smile across his face. He even talks in the mic while wearing the hat. Brock did this moment perfectly. <laughs> it looks like he's having the time of his life as he dances to the music and conducts the band. The complete opposite of this moment is Brock Lesnar's rivalry with The Undertaker. Uh -huh. Time stood still the moment Lesnar pinned The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30. People had a lot of emotion seeing this, most of them negative, so when The Beast and The Dead Man had a rematch at the 2015 SummerSlam, Which was it fun. was pretty tense. After the bell rang, the match was extremely brutal, and Lesnar even got busted open. Still, this match somehow created one of The Beast's funniest moments. Right. After Taker delivered a tombstone pile driver, both men lay lifeless on the mat. Brock was the first to get up, and The Beast was actually laughing. Undertaker rose next, and he too. <laughs> <laughs> they quickly got back to fighting, but it was just such a random and hilarious moment in that another was serious great. match. Well, besides Lesnar giving the Undertaker the finger while he's being choked out, that was pretty funny too. That was a cool moment. I, I just wish that the I know they were trying to build up Redacted as this ultimate being. I just wish the uh, Undertaker didn't have to hit him with a low blow to achieve that. But it was still a real. You could have got the same effect with him choking him out and him you know, redacted being defiant. I, that's the only thing I take away from it. everything else. You can leave the same way on that match. Just the Undertaker pretty much cheating to win. I was like, ah, I wouldn't have did that. That's my only thing. If you're going to give him his win back, I wouldn't have did that. But everything else, I thought it was fantastic about this match.
Yeah. While Brock might not be The Rock, The Beast was channeling his inner people's champion when he made this joke about his opponent. Eight days after becoming a six-time WWE champion, uh. Brock Lesnar came face-to-face -face with his first challenger, Bobby Lashley. The Beast then decided to have some fun at Lashley's expense. The disrespect. Knock, knock. Okay, Brock, who's there? Bobby. Bobby who? Exactly. It's kind of ironic because WWE now says the exact same thing about Brock Lesnar. After attacking CM Punk in the middle <laughs> That's the funny thing. Everything comes full circle. Yes. <laughs> Redacted who? <laughs> Love it. Love it. Middle of a match, Brock, Paul Heyman, as well as Heyman's other client, Curtis Axel, went backstage for an interview. The Beast said some pretty typical stuff, but then he ended with this. Paul, say something stupid. <laughs> Brock did not need to say that at all, but the fact that he took time to take a shot at his own agent is pretty funny. <laughs> also, I don't know why, but Brock not blinking or breaking eye contact with the camera for 20 seconds makes it even more hilarious. As funny as Brock Lesnar can be, it's impossible to get the beast to break character, unless your name is our truth In January 2020, Brock Lesnar was the WWE Champion. The master of the F5 made the surprising decision to enter the Royal Rumble match since he felt no one was worthy to challenge him. In the lead up to the Rumble, the WWE champ crossed paths with the 24-7 champ, R-Truth. Truth announced that he was also going to participate in the Royal Rumble and made a bold statement. You may be a big, big, big man, but I know you will go flying over that top rope, Paul Heyman. Yeah. <laughs> Brock Lesnar could not keep it together and broke character on live TV. <laughs> However, Lesnar can get people to break too. After Brock Lesnar defeated Kurt Angle at funny, WrestleMania man. 19, the Olympic gold medalist had to undergo neck surgery. Once Angle returned, he and Lesnar formed something of a competitive friendship. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jim. Hey, how you doing? She was talking to me. She was talking to me. To prove who's the better athlete, Lesnar and Angle agreed to compete in a push-up contest. Right before Brock started, Lesnar made a joke that was so funny, it caused Angle to break character. So this is what it's like at your level. <laughs> get, get down and do your damn push-ups. All right. Now, what wasn't funny was when Brock Lesnar nearly killed another wrestler in the ring. Jesus. To see that, watch this oh, video. Oh my, bro, bro. Do y'all remember the scene brothers that used to come out there with Jinder Mahal? They were just getting tossed around like rag dolls. It wasn't just redacted that was just throwing them with careless abandonment. It was like Randy Orton. It was like anyone that attacked them, they just went flying. They would over rotate, fall on their neck and head area. Like they just, they were just cannon fodder, bro. Just get these guys out of here. They were JAGs for another bigger JAG. Yeah, I said it. Jenner's a JAG. Come fight me. Anywho, oh uh, no, this was a very funny video. Once again, I only checked this out because some of y'all wanted me to check this out as like a, a funny moment. So hopefully you guys enjoyed me checking out some of uh Redacted's funny moments and bloopers, man. Apparently, I heard they're supposed to be trying to put them back in WWE 2K uh 24 as a playable character. So I'm not sure. But until you know everything uh clears up with the whole Vince McMahon case situation. He's still gonna be redacted. But I appreciate all the love support you guys showing on channel Road to 150k. And I'm still gonna speed the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.